Hey, you there. Thank you for watching and welcome to Forge Lands Forever. Today I have a 5v5 custom match here on the most amazing Naroxis map generator. So let's go ahead and introduce our teams and our players. But starting off, we want to slow down just a little bit so we don't miss any of that early action. Starting off with Team 1 here in the northeast corner of the map, ending with Team 2 in the southwest. Starting off with the northernmost player and heading south, we have the player of Darkness Falls going first and second land as a UEF. He is a thousand rated player and he is in orange, the color orange. To his south in royal blue, we have Nasimka being, going first land as an Aeon. He is an 1800, the highest rated player on his team and tied the highest rated player in the game. Again, he is going royal blue to his west. Very near the uh, the ocean, a couple of the other players are as well. We have Tesla Max going first, a a land second, air as another UEF for his team. He is in Snow White and he is a 1300. To his southeast, camouflaging himself with the map, it is Smithers going first, land as another Aeon for his team, and he is a 1600 going first, land. And last but not least, 14 1 on the eastern side of the pond, we have Tectonic. Going first land as a UEF. Maybe he will shift some of the plates around and cause a couple of earthquakes. He is a 1400, and again, he is a UEF. So for Team 1 side of things, we have three UEF and two Aeon. No Cybran and no Sarah from here for Team 1. To the west here for Team 2, starting off in the rearguard air slot here for his team. We have in the color rust, we have Shukuniapoli. Drop. Shukuniapoli. The Kuniatrop, I think that's how you said that. Going first air as a Seraphim. And he's in the color rest and he is an 1100. To his north in Light Oak Tam, we have Judica 1972 Noob going first land, second air as a UEF. He is the highest rated player on his team at an 1800 and he is tied for the highest rated player with the player of Nasimka. And again, he's going UEF as a 1800 in light oak tan to his east we have near closer to the water we have tetra going first land as a second seraphim here for his team he is in regal purple and again he is a 1200 the other purple player here on team two already moving to the north we have touch my berries very interesting name there sir he's going first air as an aeon and he is a 1500 and last but not least here for team two Already on the move as well, we have Son of Ibis. He is another Aeon here for his team. He is going Jeffy Crimson. He's going Forest Land, and he is a 1400. So for Team 2 side of things, very similar to Team 1, except there are two Seraphim, two Aeon, and one UEF. So all of the, the other two UEF players converted to Seraphim, and there is no Cybran on either side of the map. Apologies to those spiky space socialists out there. And again, Team 2, of course, is made up with two Aeon, two Seraphim, and a UEF. And we have three UEF and two Aeon for Team 1. In terms of Reclaim currently on the map, we have 13,000 Reclaim, a little bit over that. So maybe, possibly, kind of, sort of, maybe 14, possibly not, but we'll just do 13 and a half for now. That is 1.35k mass per player if it was distributed evenly, which it never is. But we can always hope it is at one day in time. We'll turn it back up to zero and start looking at the early plays as we talk about the mechs layouts. We have a lot of mechs here in the southeast and northwest corners for both players to grab. Kind of looks like a leaf. You kind of have the stem of the leaf as it kind of branches out like this. So lots of mass. We have a trimex position as well as a bunch of just kind of singles dotted out. That's three, four. Let's see, at 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, if we count this one, just in this corner of the map. So a lot of mass early on for both teams to scoop up. Both teams are going to want to head there very early. And besides that, we do have a lot of mass kind of spread out between the north and the south sections of the map. Another trimex position on the coastline there. We have a double mex position as well, but not really a terrible amount of mechs is very tightly knit together or at least that are going to be fought over early on we do see the first naval facility has been established here by team one's tesla max trying to secure the middle of the map in terms of that ocean 
Oh, apologies. It isn't an ocean. It is a lake or a pond or a body of water or whatever the heck we're going to call it this game. So it's a large territory. I wouldn't be surprised to see T2 cruisers, especially because there's a, you know two, sorry, three UEF players on Team 1, so that's a lot of uh, governor-class cruisers that can be established. Team 2 does have that as well for both the UEF and the Seraphim, so they can fight back in that a missile war game. We do see transports outbound here for Team 2's Touch My Berry. And he is moving to grab all these mixes as quickly as he can. His comm is going there. An additional comm for Team 2 is headed there in the form of, let's see, that is Son of Ibis. We do see a lot of transports here for Team 1 as well. Two of them, actually, from both Nasimka and from Smithers. Trying to grab this reclaim. We do see the comm of Tectonic nearby. Going to grab a couple of mexes, and we even see more units coming out here from Team 2. This is actually from, let's see, that is Judica, so he's trying to establish some sort of stronghold here in the east. I don't know if that will last terribly long, given there's a calm on its way, a decent force here, a decent force going to be established here. He's kind of surrounded on all sides, will mainly be a thorn for a little bit, not necessarily a large threat there. For Team 1 on the eastern side. Bombing runs are occurring here in the west here for Team 1 Smithers as well. Going after Engineers kills one of them. But I don't think it'll do that much work. There is uh, also a Spirit nearby going after some Engineers. So maybe in combination with the Bomber, maybe we'll see something. But it doesn't look like that Bomber's coming back to assist. That Spirit gets immediately annihilated by the comm. And I don't know if that's the first kill of the game, but it's definitely one of the first. We do see these engineers running for their lives here from Judica, trying to make it out of range. We do see that T1 PD helping to cover their retreat. They are retreating as fast as they can and going for the reclaim here. But there is an AA gun. It is a UEF. Sorry, not UEF. It is an Aeon. You cannot fire on ground units like the Cybrans can, which is a benefit. The accuracy is terrible, but, you know, again, something is better than nothing. Does look like the units will be found out here sooner rather than later. And we already have some leeching attacks coming out here from Team 1's Nasimka. Trying to force back Team 2 on this southern side. Going to establish a nice front line. Not necessarily on the diagonal cut of the map, but on the vertical cut of the map. Deny a lot of that mass here for Team 2. We do see the comm is very far forward here in the north for Touch My Berries. But there's really no threat for now. The air player of Darkness Falls is... Not going for T2 air as we speak. He's going for a lot of just engineers for scooping up that reclaim. I don't see any effort for T2. Oh, there will be T2 coming out here for Nasimka here pretty soon. But we should see Team 2, sorry, T2 on the way here for Team 2. Oh, all those T, those T's and those 2's, man. E every single time I say a lot of that stuff very quickly, it's like a tongue twister. There isn't any upgrades for either of the air player for T2. Both teams, which is very surprising. He is going for the left the drone here for Darkness. Probably will go for right after that. And there's going to be a lot of momentum here coming out of Team 1. So, again, similar kind of yin-yang scenario. Team 2 going to be pushed back on the southern side. I wouldn't be surprised to see a similar thing happen on the northern side against Team 1. Both teams are fighting in the Navy, but 2v1 subs, uh, well, actually 3v1 subs, definitely will bet on the more units here. And with only frigates on the call here for Team 2's naval player so far of Tetra, they're not going to be able to fight off those torpedoes from those subs. We do see a son of Ibis trying to get into that game as well, trying to be as far spread out as he can along this western edge of the pond, being able to just annoy Team 1. That's what you got to do early on is just annoy, deny as much as you can, but mainly just annoy. We do see, again, a huge effort coming out from both the players of... Smithers and from Nasimka pushing westward. We do see the calm of Smithers pushing. We also see the calm of Tectonic pushing as well. While both Nasimka and Smithers are pushing on the southern edge, we see the calm of Tectonic pushing on the northern edge, or at least the southern side of that pond. And we kind of see a similar thing happening, but Team 1 is vastly far ahead in terms of that momentum gaining. The Team 2 needs to fight back in some sort of way, which, you know, easily could go eastward. Same thing here for Son of Ibis. But Ibis is focused on the Navy, so he'll, a lot of his attention will be diverted into the middle section of the map versus the northern section. And this will give Tesla Max a little bit of time to push westward or at least hold the positions that he currently has, which is better than nothing. First real land battle going on. The cards here, Tectonic and his forces versus the forces outbound from... Tetra, Tetra trying to hold off the incoming force 
will be able to destroy a lot of the units here for Tectonic, but again, the comm is here, and that's 20 tanks worth of damage and hit points and whatnot. Though, realistically, not the... Uh, I shouldn't say hit points. It's more damage than hit points. Just because of how long it takes for uh, 20 T1 tanks to take out a comm, that sort of thing. That's where that comparison comes from. But we do see Judica coming into assist, so it's going to be a 3v2 comm scenario, or at least 2v2 in the middle. We do see uh, Schoon. I think I'll call him Schoon. New in the south. And again, a lot of presence there for Team 1 on the southern edge. Gun being established for Smithers. He'll go for speed next and then probably go for advanced range, but at least the speed at a minimum. We do see T2 on the cards here for Touch My Berries. He is a, a Aeon, so he does have those Oblivion. Uh, so those, ob the, yeah, the Oblivion turret to PD, not the Obsidian turret. P P ah, PD, not turrets. I was playing a game where they're turrets instead of uh, PD, and it confuses my brain. We do have that speed upgrade like I predicted going on the cards here for Smithers. We do see Tectonic pushing forward. T1 PD has been established. We'll take out some units, but with the comm very, very nearby, there is a decent amount of pressure coming out from these Zumi and from these Thams, so Tectonic will be forced back just a little bit, giving his units enough time with assisting units from Smithers to get pretty close to that front line coming out here against Tetra. And now Judica, he's established his own front line a little bit further south of that position and he's actually hiding a little bit above the you know plateau area so it'll take a second to come up and then attack giving the higher uh, altitude player the higher ground player to uh, quote Star Wars there the advantage at least for now lots of Navy coming out here from the player of Tesla Max pushing against son of Ibis in the water we do see a lot of subs being established very smart move, being able to force back these units of those frigates because frigates can't fire back against subs, so it's a perfect counter. We do see the comms of Tesla Max and Darkness Falls dealing with this incursion coming out here from Touch My Berries. Again, very interesting name for Touch My Berries. These are Aurora, so they are very weak in terms of hit points. Two shots for the UEF comm kills them, and then I think with the Zef Amp, it's a one shot. So he'll be able to fight that off very quickly, get some nice needed veterans and be able to start repping up to at least one star, if not two, here pretty soon if more attacks do not occur. Which is very interesting because Touch My Berries hasn't been super aggressive. He has the radar signature upgrade, so he has a huge amount of vision, but isn't really pushing that much. And he's also trying to obviously work in tandem with his teammate of Son of Ibis, and he's not really pushing as much, kind of establishing a defensive perimeter, not necessarily pushing it, giving Team 1 a huge advantage in the mass sort of things. Team 1 at 445, Team 2 at 385. So 60 masses, almost six, uh, yeah, about 60 mass a second is a decent advantage here at 11 and a half minutes in this game. T3 air should be established here. Yep, it is established here for the player... Judica, and we do see in the north it is established here for Nasimka. And we do see it established here for Team 1's Darkness Fall as well. Uh, actually, it's Darkness Falls, excuse me. Stupid, no, go away, glitch, I don't, no. <laughs> Click on something and make it go away. Go away, I don't, I don't want to see a naval upgrade, please. Because I think that's what I saw. I did see some subs, though. And... So both teams will have T3 air, so comms very far forward need to be aware of that. Either team could go for early strat. I don't see that necessarily. I kind of see more just more ASF and maybe some T2 production. Maybe some of those uh, Nathas or in this case those Janus just to kind of deal with the incoming land threat. I don't know if I see the strats though. There is some water obviously in the middle of the map, so... Some of the comms can easily just run undercover there, so uh, it's not really that much of an um, advantage. If you can get into the rear and take out some mixes, it would be, or even take come take out whatever's down here or up here, it would be worth it, but I, I don't know if it's super worth it, in my opinion. Tectonic going for gun upgrade. We do see an attack coming out from Team 1's Tesla going after this facility. Does kill the facility here for Tetra. Tetra will be locked out of Navy for now. And we also see, of course, Smith is coming in to assist. A couple of T2 Mexes will be under threat, but not by much. Huge naval force and pseudo naval force outbound here from some of Son of Ibis to come and intercept forces and at least try to assist Tetra in that naval side of things. 
And we are seeing a T2 facility pop up right here. They're producing those T1 torp bombers to help assist in defense. They aren't super strong, but again, against one boat, it's pretty nice to have a, something shooting at that opponent. Now, if we're talking about 30 D2 destroyers, yeah, that's not that's not going to happen. And now we can see the influence that Team 1 is having on the land grab sort of thing. They have the middle of the map essentially under their control, or at least occupied. And they have a lot of mass coming out here from the middle, especially here for Tesla Max, fueling his economy. He's going T2. I would probably see him go T3 at about 20 or so minutes. Given the amount of mass he has, he's going T2 to, again, establish a perimeter and upgrade his commander. But all these pseudo-naval units coming out here from the Aeon player of Son of Ibis will force back the combined naval pressure coming out from Team 1. Especially with these Asylum T2 shields. They're really the only uh, avenue of shields for the Aeon because the UEF have the only shield boat in the game. Uh, the actual shield boat of the Bulwark. We are seeing some... Um, T1 subs. I thought I saw a T2 in that mix, but I guess they're all just T1. I think I just see the Exodus class just firing off. I wouldn't be surprised to see T2 sub be a um, you know, staple here for Team 2 Son of Ibis, but uh, they're just producing destroyers for now, which is a good good idea, a good thing to do. You want that firepower on the front lines. I want to see at least a couple of cruisers for some AA coverage, but... Uh, I think the firepower is a little bit more important. Team 1 isn't pressing the advantage with air, and neither team is for that matter. So getting some AA is important, but it isn't super important. We do see calm on calm action at 15 minutes in this game. Tectonic going after Tetra here. This quad facility being heavily damaged here. Team 1 mix at 91% for an upgrade and gets taken out. All of that mass does not get refunded. That has got to earth. We do see a couple of units starting to surround Tetra. This is more of a pushback force than a killing force. The uh, Tom and his units are not really going after the Tom directly, just going after infrastructure and units. The facility was reestablished and will be summarily destroyed once again here by Smithers. The Team 1 really wants to lock Team 2 out of the Navy. The only competitor for Team 2 is Son of Ibis. And he's very front line, and he's holding his position quite well. A lot of T2 blazes, those floaty, floaty, naughty, naughty units coming out here from Touch My Berries, and he'll be able to take out a lot of T1 and T2 mexes here. There's hardly any protection or units for that matter. There is a triad nearby, but there's not a lot, and so that will definitely assist Team 2 in helping come back in this mass generation game at 16 and a half minutes. We see Team 1 starting to get further and further ahead at 80 mass a second in terms of the 60 we talked about earlier. T2 units are being a staple here for Team 2's player of, let's see, it is Schoon. And he is forcing back Smithers and trying to cut off reinforcements from reaching Tectonic. Essentially what I think is happening is Team 2 wants to split Team 1's forces into two different armies, respectively to their comms and units. And so I essentially force all of the attention onto the northern southern player of Tectonic and then hook back around for Smithers. All of those forces here for Team 1 Smithers has retreated. And there's a lot of protection here. T2 and T1 PD being able to hold off any incoming threats. A lot of this army is T1. We don't see T2. We are starting to see it in the rear, but not in the front lines. Definitely will give the advantage here for Team 2's Schoon. And we also see a couple of his units guarding the northern approach here. ASF flying around to protect some transport or whatever was going on. Maybe Tectonic is thinking about leaving. I don't know. The transport left. Maybe it's a courier mission. It is a courier mission or a transport mission. We do see a huge amount of units here in the middle here for Team 2's Son of Ibis, and they are ripping that naval fleet to shreds for Smithers, and that force will be very deadly and very hard for Team 1 to deal with. Team 1 pushing the land advantage as much as they can. 17 and a half minutes, they are impeding onto Judica's forces and position now. His main base is back here, but outlying facilities for both of these players are under threat. Does look like Team 1 PD is being spammed up as quickly as it can be. We do see in the south, the Kama Smithers has been defeated by Judica with T3 gunships. Apologies for missing that, but got taken out by those broadswords. Air coverage was not enough, and that will definitely shake up this eastern, well, in that case, westbound, but in terms of Team 2, eastbound, or, you know, in the east. 
attack here. And now it's a 5v4 in favor of Team 2. Almost said Team 1 there. Team 1 had the uh, disappearing Comac. Nat has got to earn. He was a little bit. I mean, I do understand he's trying to be very aggressive, and I get that. And uh, it does look like Tectonic made a comment about it. Maybe Dead says uh, Smithers and you lost Navy. Uh, what plate? Uh, th th yeah, there's really nothing about that uh, being far forward. And this will definitely slow down the aggressive machinations of Team 1 in the southern section of the map. And with the loss of Navy in the middle, it's not really looking good for Team 1 here at 18, almost 19 minutes in this game. D2 forces are just going to plow through the remaining forces here for now in the Simca. And if Simka has to worry about what's going to happen over here, a lot of T2 mechs is here, a lot of mass that he wants to keep and funnel his economy with, or fuel his economy with, not well, funnel into and fuel. We are seeing a lot of gunships being built here. These Spectres, they're not as good as Restorers, but it's better than nothing. We do see the air grid being established here for him as well. In the north, we see another air grid and a secondary air grid. Love to see that where we have the primary, I guess this might be the primary, we have primary and secondary air grids versus them being one conjoined because you want to, you know, do away with the cascade T3 P gen effect. But that's I even struggle to remember. Oh yeah, I should probably not do that kind of thing. We do see artillery being lobbed against Tetris position, but it's more focused on I don't know what it's focused on, but it lands right there, takes out a shield emplacement that was being constructed. All of engineers funnel into upgrade uh, upgrading, but establishing this. T2 shield and definitely will protect it. Oh, gets in and takes it out at the last second. Ooh, that was a lucky artillery shot from these clink hammers. Actually, this one clink hammer, actually. Tatonic is thinking, ooh, I like that. I'm going to build more of those and just another one's going to be built. So there's only so much you can do before Seraphim get their shields online. But being able to slow it down just a little bit. And now we see the counterattack coming here from the naval player of Son of Ibis going after these T2 naval facilities as well as a couple of those, well, HQs, of course, that's the main target, denying a Team 1 Navy. The only downside here is that Team 1 has all of their Navy concentrated in the northeast section, where they could be down here, very similar to what Son of Ibis is doing. We see another attack by these Blazes. Team 1's as Tesla Max has not learned his lesson and is now having to deal with these once again. We saw them come in earlier, and they are just ripping through the mass and the units that are guarding those positions. We do see a lot of cruisers now starting to appear here for Team 1. A good, it's good that we see those, but now with the incoming threat of all of these blazes, all of these destroyers, blazes don't do a lot of damage. Like, don't don't be fooled. They don't do a lot of damage. They're very annoying. They soak up incoming shots, though. That's the main thing. We have Janus over the top here for Team 1. Tectonic as well coming in to assist. Putting fire on your teammates' uh, facilities. Not the best idea, but it's better than nothing. And of course, since these blazes float, torpedoes don't work against them. You see more and more destroyers being established. Again, the main goal are the T2 headquarters. But a lot of the attack has petered out for Team 2 Son of Ibis, but that has given him time to establish a secondary facility. And then maybe Tetra will get back into the naval game. We'll have to see as the game progresses. I saw a T3 broadsword dip. It's down here. It has 17 kills, 7,000 mass kill. Definitely paid for itself in that regard. Taking out a lot of mass on the southern section against Team 1. Aces immediately kill that thing off, but uh, nu Nuke. Hold on, do we got a Nuke down here somewhere? Mm, no, maybe that's Team 1's Nuke. Maybe that's what they're talking about. I don't see much of anything. I see air facilities. I don't see... What is he talking about? Maybe go for a Nuke? Maybe that's what Judica's talking about. I mean, either way, whether you have a Nuke, you have to face a Nuke. Nukes are very fun to watch. And I get to say kaboom a lot, so that's 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 always fun as well. Team 1 has repelled that incoming threat. They have taken severe losses here on this uh, northern section of the middle, as well as, of course, they've lost to Calm in the south. Let me know down in the comments who you think is going to currently win. Again, Team 1 is at four players left. Team 2 is at five players left. Team 1 currently has 950 mass. Let's average it out, 950 per second versus the 900 for Team 2. They have more mass accumulated for now, which that can change at any mo pretty much any moment. And Team 2 has a large navy as well. And they've already forced back Team 1 once again. So again, let me know down in the comments who do you think is going to currently win. And again, hit that like button, hit that sub button, comment down below, whatever else you want to talk about with me, and I will 
greatly uh, appreciate the. I will definitely. I greatly appreciate that comment, and I will definitely read it and reply to it within a reasonable amount of time. Some days it's pretty quick, couple hours after. Some days it's you know 12 hours, and rarely is it more than 24. But the holidays were definitely one of those days or those periods of time where I was just not. I was you know busy with family and friends and all that, and was just not on top of all the comments. And I appreciate your patience with waiting for my for those comments to be read and then replied to. We do see a couple of Spectres going up this frontline base, but with a T1AA emplacement, I mean, almost kills off that Spectre at 58 hit points left, but I wouldn't be surprised to see Team 2's Schoon be able to deal with these pretty shortly. We do see some SMDs being built here by Team 2. They must be talking about a nuke for Team 1. That's the only thing that really makes sense. I don't see anything, though, unless I am blind, which... It, it has happened from time to time. We see an engineer running around here for Darkness Falls. And more air grids, tertiary air grids and whatnot being established here. Lots of build power just moving around, shaking up, doing what they want to do. I don't see any nuke. We have uh, Sam, says, uh, says Judica. Don't know what damn sight. I don't know what. Stop taking Mexus, says Tectonic. Oh, talking about Nasimka, I think. This facility is still online and still holding strong, but there now are Team 2 destroyers in range, and it's uh, it's not going well here for Team two, Team 1's Tectonic. He's now establishing his own position here in the south, as well as a horde of Team 1 factories here for Nasimka as well. Wants to mass produce those frigates, I would imagine. And now the counter-counter attack is occurring here for Team 1's naval players of Nasimka and Tesla Max. They're forcing back those units here for Team 2. There are some shields in the way. Will they be able to divert some of that incoming firepower? But there's a lot of incoming firepower from all of these destroyers because, of course, destroyers do have torpedoes built on them as well as torpedo defense to be able to assist with dealing with those nasty, nasty subs. Cruisers coming online here. Not going to be able to fire that much in terms of ordnance against uh, this horde of destroyers. I mean, so far we still have six online here for Tesla Max, and for Nasimka we have nine, so 15 destroyers versus, what, one, two, three? But there are a bunch of blazes in the mix as well, so that definitely adds to the uh, firepower coming off of Team 2. But that army will be slowly dealt with. Team 1 needs to deal with these blazes, though. Again, they don't do a lot of damage individually, but together and over long periods of time, they are very annoying. Spectre gunships going to be called in to assist with a decent amount of restorers that looks like a squadron roughly of the nah, it's not a f it's not it's a half a wing uh, a full wing is 12 looks like there's three seven of them so a little over half a wing of restorers we do see some sam sites being established all around the map here for team one's darkness falls to help assist with anti-air uh efforts we do see a decent force here for him as well as one for nasimka with having two air players definitely gives them advantage in that air i'm surprised they're not going more t2 bombers i'm very surprised in that lots of flak can be able to deal with these restores though they're targeting the cruisers which of course the restores have a lot of health but they are being churned through they're not known for their air to ground weaponry and all of those restores get knocked out of the sky Ooh. Ah, it's got to hurt. No cover, says Tesla Max. I think uh, Smithers to Tesla Max, no cover. Yeah, your mirror's base is really exposed. Says Smithers. Two Tectonic. The Tectonic talking about the fact that uh, this uh, his base, yeah, there's really nothing left here on the southern side. The Tectonic has fallen back into the southeast trying to help in the Navy game, and he's produced his own T2 floaty, floaty, not and not units of the Riptides. We have... We have T1 frigates and T2 destroyers coming in to deal with them, but they're going to crash onto the beachhead, and we have some Oblivion turrets as well, but a couple of them isn't going to stop the amount that is inbound. T2 mexes are under threat. T3, nope, not started, so just mexes hanging out with some engineers or vice versa. We do see an attack finally happening on this northern side of the map here for Team 2 by Touch My Berries. He has a Colossus definitely underprepared Team 1. We do, but they do have their own Colossus, so underprepared, eh, not really. Eh, 
There isn't really any other ground units in terms of fly in terms of like firepower on ground to ground weaponry, just ground to air. Will uh, not really go that well here for either teams is uh, Colossus, because whoever has air control would definitely win that fight. Which at least at this point, Team One, it's closer to their side of the field. We do see Restorers coming in to assist. They need to take out the flak as the main goal. The brothers in arms are throwing their lasers at one another. Both attacking their cores. They're just going to have a nice little hug session out. Trying to just, you know, hang out. Say, hey, bro. Bro, you need to you need to relax here, bro. <laughs> bro, you got to um, just, just chill it, okay? I, I know you, we've had some disagreements, but you, you got you to gotta relax here. This is, this is not okay. <laughs> you got to take a chill pill. Come on. Uh, guys, oh no, <laughs> you won, brother. I will see you on the other side. And that Colossus gains a rank conveniency, is now at 27,000 hit points. Still pretty low, but in terms of hit points, you know, it will wrap up slowly, but it's better than nothing. And the Colossus has been felled, and now reclaim efforts will be established. And another Colossus inbound here for Team One's air player of Darkness Falls. He's kind of having a dual world of air and land. Not a tri roll of air, land, and ground, which is essentially what Nasimka is doing. He has ground forces in the south here for these Harbingers, and they are just ripping through whatever's left of those frontline engineers here for Team 2, trying to establish that, you know, recam gains and whatnot. But a lot of T2PD. Oh, that's not going to look good. That is a decent amount of firepower, and those things hardly ever miss. As deemed by the fact they have to be direct line of sight. We even have some Althams coming in from the south as well. So these Harbingers are not going to stand very long under that kind of firepower. We have the Harbingers kind of coming into the north to avoid those Althams. But it is not going well. The shields haven't even been punctured. One of them has, but it doesn't really matter. Those Harbingers have to retreat and they'll all be killed off anyways. Team 1's Nasimka was not prepared for that kind of firepower. But we do see T3 units. We see a Summit and a Neptune online here for Team 1's Tesla Max versus a T3 Battleship here for Team 2's Land of Avis. We see another one here, and I wouldn't be surprised to see, yep, there is another one being produced as well. That is a lot of firepower for both teams in the Navy side of things. And T2 Torpedo Bombers now making their uh, frontline debut. These Storks coming for those battleships. Well, maybe. Oh, I guess they were going for those destroyers, but a lot of them were killed off due to flak and other AA. And we forced back into the bowels of Team 1's front line. We have one Navy versus two, says Tectonic. Pathetic. Ah, Nuke, says Tectonic. Both teams said Nuke. Oh, right here. Thank you for pinging that. I appreciate it. Team 2 has their own Nuke. It is a Stone Ager from the UEF. Judica is producing it as we speak. Team 2 has some nice juicy targets to go after if Team 1 doesn't respond to this. Frontline positions both for Tesla Max and for Tectonic. We do see the air grid here for Nasimka. does have an SMD and it has a pretty decent amount loaded so far. We do see the very exposed air grid of Team 1's Darkness Falls. So probably might be thinking about getting a T3 SMD probably around here somewhere to guard the T3 mixes as well. But with such a not large pond for these battleships to kind of hang out in and kind of swim around in, this is the range that they have. So essentially, if you're sitting in the middle of the pond, you can essentially hit more than half of the pond. So very dangerous to have both those teams have those long range units. Obviously, you don't want to keep them still because those missiles coming off of those governors are uh, nothing to be trifled with. Especially when you have like 30 of them attacking you, then it doesn't look good. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't feel good either. Nasimka is being pushed back here in the southeast. Essentially, he's just probably just going to keep this position online as long as he can, but not devote too much to it. He is going to have to worry about a chicken with a horde of Othams. Those Othams are moving kind of slow. I feel like they're moving a lot slower that they, than they normally will. But T1 Palmers are inbound to help soften up the defenses. The chicken is going to stay at range, forcing those units to come out of hiding. More shields are being established as we can. Flak and other units dealing with whatever they can. PD is being attacked. Taking out a couple, uh, actually took out really nothing. Oblivion turrets are now in range for that chicken to just take opening fire. Shields need to be established, but they're being cut down. Those engineers building them have been destroyed. 
feel like this Simka is going to lose this. Even if he kills the chicken off, this horde of Othams and Ilshis and other units and Lightning Tanks is not looking pretty here for Team 1's Simka on this eastern side. Nuke with a lot of assistance says Smithers. It does have a lot of assistance. It's already halfway completed. How is Nasimka's SMD doing? Well, it is almost done a lot of support now for this. We'll cover essentially Texas Tesla Max's main base and the air grid. An SMD was established, but it needs to be assisted as quickly as you can, getting a bunch of a, bu a much a bunch of mass fabs online. Uh, dude, what are you doing? What? <laughs> this darkness. Like, what am I doing? We see an Atlantis. Love to see it. Very interesting choice here for Tectonic. It doesn't really have a lot of facilities, but of course has gone for this. Huge value going to get out of this unless Team 2 produces those UFOs in the water known as the Tempests. This Atlantis is going to be very, very key. And that's a lot of battleships that have been produced by both teams very quickly. Unfortunately, there's not that many battleships for Team 2's. Navy player of Son of Ibis, and they are being pumped out as quickly as they can, but we also see a couple of shield boats coming in to well, shield the Navy. We have a couple of Othams as well, sorry, Omens as well. That is a lot of firepower in the middle. Team 2 needs to be cognizant of this. The nuke might be used against the Navy. That might be the smart play. And there is the nuke. It is being launched and is launching against Tesla Max's core max. It's core maxes. Does the, I'm assuming it doesn't, it does not, barely out of range. Definitely uh, edge nuked that. And so the S, actually, wow, look at this. We have a nuke launcher coming out from Nasimka as well. Tesla Max is running. He has nothing to be worried about. This air grid could have been taken out, but uh, is not. And I see it. I see it in the corner. The Paragon has been established. It has appeared on the map. Team 2, the longer they don't know about that, the worse it's going to be for them. We have a couple of missile ships. Love to see those. And an attack coming out. Sorry, kaboom. We have an attack coming out here from the west with a bunch of harbingers for Team 2. has touched my berries. Once he was defeated by those couple, oh, those, that singu singular colossus. We haven't seen a lot from him recently. But there's a huge attack coming in. Team 1 needs to respond with this. There's a nice naval engagement happening. A lot of boats are underwater, even those coming out from Team 1's Nasimka trying to use the shields to their advantage and hide. Lots of spirits trying to just tax the artillery shots from those naval units, trying to just annoy them for as long as they can, but they are tuning through those units very quickly. Target priorities are on bigger units. There really isn't anything here. The amount of spirits being released onto that front line is astounding just wanting to just annoy at this point those units are not being dealt with t2 subs i oh, said subs t2 tort bombers can't really do much against stuff that's on land so need to rethink their approach in that regard there are some restorers nearby that can easily just be thrown to deal with this and this is going to open a nice hole in team one's defenses does team two have an opening with the nuke they are building a duke that uh, rhymes there duke and a nuke t3 has been established here for Team 2's Tetra, so trying to get back in the naval side of things, but I don't know if that's going to last very long, especially with the amount of frigates and destroyers being just thrown. Doesn't even care at this point. Thrown at the enemy. And artillery shots landing all over the place. We only see one Neptune, which is very weak. But, you know, one is better than none in this case. And those, those units are getting a lot of worth out of uh, their incoming uh, nastiness here for Team 2's touch my berries. I mean, they are going to be slowed down very quickly by these restorers, but they have been able to get all the way back here to Nasimka's front line and front, you know, back line mixes and whatnot. So very, very uh, mismanagement with it. We even see those harbingers actually diverting northward to come after Darkness Falls' base. And he has no defenses except for a couple of Rascoms. The Rascoms can do a decent amount of firepower. There are triads being spanned up as quickly as they can be multiple being built at the same time and those harbingers are not moving which means all that are all those shots coming out from those pd are hitting and it's going to not feel good they do take out one rascom so what is that nine eleven mass a second that's not bad but uh, they did a lot more damage with the of course destruction of the mexes themselves two colossus leading a nice anti-air army with a couple of harbingers in the mix and more on the way that missile ship is essentially the thorn in Team 1's land side of things with just the long range that that stupid thing has. It's not stupid, it's just uh, 
annoying to fight. It's nice to have, but very annoying to fight. All these torque bombers could just be thrown at that thing and kill it. I think outright. Uh, yeah, I think outright they could probably kill that thing in one pass. We do see a couple of Yasaos being built here by Team 2 Tetra to help assist, but with that Atlantis, that's not really going to go well. The main core mass here for Team 2's Thunder Vibus is being shot down as we speak. Still, that missile zip is still online. And not really a lot going on over here. We have an SMD in the corner here for Touch My Berries to protect himself. Lots of T1 bombers are inbound here to take out those Colossus. Where do those Colossus go for defenses? One right. Oh, no, that's a fat boy. That's not a Colossus. Where the, f where the Colossus go? I don't. Oh, they're, they're retreating. I was wondering where they're going. And those two brothers in arms are going to turn back around and face the enemy T1. Bombers just being spammed out as quickly as they can be, ripping through those hit points with all of their napalm and all that nastiness. You do see a horde of Torp Bombers over the middle, which at this point isn't really going to do a whole much. I do love this, though. One Neptune versus one missile ship just immediately <laughs> kills the thing. Uh, spam Torrent says Smithers to Nasimka. And yeah, th that's a good idea. We see a second Atlantis online, and now this Atlantis is falling back. It's actually above the surface of the water. And the main base here for Tetra is being annihilated. They're probably going after the nuke. The nuke is half loaded. I don't think there hasn't been a second nuke launch. The entire southeastern corner has been eliminated. And there's a nice army just edging their way on this east side of the map, being assisted by a couple of units outbound here from Tetra. So Team 2 has a nice, nice sneaky attack. A lot of AA, a couple of omens, but a lot of AA. And I see some uh, nastiness coming on. This uh, Zara almost being completed, though, will pretty much deter most of this. The lightning tanks will be able to rip through a lot, but they have May Voice says Smithers. I don't wear. That's a Duke, not a Mavor. Unless it's hidden somewhere and it's completely missed. Uh, no, that's not a Mavor. That is a Duke. Still, our team from artillery is annoying to deal with. But it does look like the omens are in range, though. Oh, they're barely at. Oh, they're barely out of range. Look at that. They're barely out of range. They need to sit, like, right here. But the, the nuke has been taken out, which is the... Uh, I don't know if that's the priority target, but it's a bigger target. The, some of the aircraft has been taken up for Nasimka, and that uh, that Tsar is being just ripped apart by those lightning tanks. It is going after them first, which is the smarter move. You take out the stuff shooting at you first, and then take out the stuff that can't shoot at you next. The nuke will launch anyways. A lot of that aircraft for Nasimka is gone. How's the, uh, how's the giant uh, infinite resource producing facility of the Paragon going? No, it's, it's in the yellow, so it's over 25%. Artillery is still coming in because it uh, cannot hit. And where will this nuke land? It will go after the air grid, so not after the artillery. Oh, it's going to hurt the air grid. So as Nasimka loses his, for the most part, the air grid here for Team 2's Judica will be eliminated as well. Takes out a couple of those ships, those uh, aircraft bombers as well. And the entire air grid is gone. Not a single T3 P-Gen or air facility is alive that, ooh, that's gotta hurt lots of tort bombers that are just sitting there not doing Strategic anything another nuke coming out here from team one team two where is it no it's launching at this point where is that second nuke oh it's over here in the southwest and it's a yolo completely missed that and this is gonna rip through that front line navy that is gonna hurt oh it's gonna land. Oh, you, there's no anti a, anti nuke, you know, naval unit, and those beautiful, beautiful units are gonna be wiped out. Ooh, it's gonna hurt. Oh, just the the essentially the black hole kind of supernova thing going on. Ooh, there goes two Atlantises, a bunch of battleships. Ah, it's gotta hurt. There are a couple of summits in the bay though, and I think they are now in range. They are in range at least to take out the fusion reactors, which means. They should be able to take out. Oh yeah, they can. De oh yeah, they can definitely take out anything over there. They're gonna be able to uh, deal with a lot of that uh, annoyingness. How's the nuke going? The donut was taken out, I think, by Team Two's air. I was distracted by the uh, the Yolo launching, but the attack in the east kind of didn't really work. There's a couple of uh, T3 units left, but not really a whole lot. A couple of 
Yoshi's making their way through, though. Another nuke launching. Again, it's by Team 2. This thing, what is it nuking against is the problem. It's going into the rear after the Paragon, and there's nothing loaded. Oh, this is not going to be good here for Team 1. Do you have any SMD in here? You have two, but I think it's way far to the west. Oh, it's not going to be good. Team 1 might lose another player here at 41 minutes in this game. If Darkness Falls does not get his butt out of there, everything being transferred over to Touch My Berries here from Judica. That is a lot. That is a lot of uh, stuff that's going to go up in smoke. But we're going to go track that once again. It is inbound. Does it crest the area? No, it does not. Which means the SMD will not be loaded and not be able to be thrown. Which means the exodus of the engineers has commenced. The Calm of Darkness Falls says, I am out of here. You should have been leaving a couple minutes ago. There it goes. There comes the shot where he takes out a heck of a model of those engineers. And there it goes. The comm is... Oh, there comes the shock wave. There it is. <laughs> you can see the demise of the comm. He just couldn't get out of there with all those incoming units coming in to flee. And Darkness Falls gets killed off by Schoon and is now a 5v3 in favor of Team 2. Team 2 leading the game with a YOLO, which I didn't even notice till now. And... That's what they meant by nuke. And they, uh, oh, it's just, oh, it's just gotta hurt. Player or be foed. Player deserved. I don't know what that, player deserted? Deserved, I don't know what that means. But it's now gonna be sent once again to that location, I think, just cause it was on the attack order. And the SMDs are gonna be hastily loaded. One SMD shoots off, isn't enough. And uh, I think we'll take out more of that air grid. And Simka inheriting everything else. Yeah, just the same spot. Uh, boom! I don't know how much more it will take out. Oh, a little bit more. It takes out that uh, air grid as well. And let's see another nuke. Where's this one going? It's going for this. Oh, it's going for Nasimka's navy. And of course, we have those units in the east that are still alive, but uh, not really doing anything. The entire southeastern section has been essentially eliminated. Team Two's player of Touch My Berries is perfectly flying up here to the northwest, producing a ton of colossi. We still have the artillery coming in from Team 1's Navy, but it's really slow. Team 1 has really slowed down in their momentum. We have ASFs just running the edge of the map for Judica. They'll be eliminated. That naval base will be destroyed. I'm sorry, Nesimka. It's not going to last. I apologize for that. I have no control over it, of course, but it's always sad to see something that... I mean, this place could have been defended, to be fair, with SMD, but... It's hard to devote so much. So what Mavor says, uh, says Darkness Falls? It wasn't a Mavor. It was a Duke. I know they might look similar, but they're, I mean, they might feel similar, but they're not. Mavor hits a lot harder. Ha, 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 says uh, Judica. Uh, this thing is being well protected with a bunch of shields, and they're being assisted, and more shields are being built. Love to see that here from Schoon. He knows the strategy. He's like, I need to assist, but I also need to produce shields. And so he's going to do both. And I love, love, love to see that. Oh, look at this beautiful thing. We're going to get a nice little screenshot of it. Maybe I'll use it. And another nuke goes off. Kaboom. Takes out more of those battleships and some aircraft carriers as well. How's the AA doing here for Team 2? Let's see. Judica has 19. That's not too bad. Schoon, how much do you have is the question. Uh, AA. 23, but a lot of it is concentrated right here. So a couple layers of defense. Love to see that. Needs probably 30 or 40 more at a minimum. Don't want any nonsense to happen. Another nuke landing over here. SMDs were hastily built together, but uh, that's not going to work. I do love this. Looks like it is a template of some sort to just mass produce SMDs. Fortunately, that is not going to last very long. SMDs are being built back in the rear, of course, here by Nasimka. They are being loaded, though. It will give Team 1 some time to build up some sort of counter to the YOLO. And more SMDs down here. Just all the SMD being loaded here by Nasimka. But Tesla Max, you're a little bit too late to the party here, my friend. And that is going to fall. It might even take out the T3 headquarters as well. Oh, it's going to hurt. I think that's what the goal was. Pigeons are gone. The SMD are gone. Oh, yeah, that's definitely DOD. Uh, really? Oh, no, there it goes. I was like, it should have died. And just all the bases here for Team 1 are being wiped off the face of the map. Team 2 needs to press the land advantage or something. 
Because if they don't, if they just rest on their laurels and they're just war, you know, just focus on the nuke, that's uh, a lot of waste of potential, essentially. Especially on the north, where there's not a whole lot but the horde of strap bombers being built by Nasimka. He's just going to strat everybody to death here. There's a nice, large army of harbingers to the north not being used. And it's kind of looking like Team 2 is just going to bet all of the money on the YOLO. YOLO or Buzz. Team 1, they're being more spread out forcibly by the YOLO. There's another one landing cup. Boom. Takes up more mass here for Team 1. In terms of mass, it's essentially well, almost tied. Team 1 at 1.4. 1 1.4 and Team 2 at 1.7. So at least 200 mass in the lead in terms of total mass generated. Team 1 still in the lead. And another nuke. This this lady is getting her work cut out for her. Is being paid by the, uh, by the word launching more and more nukes a second yolo because why not why not just why not we've had we've seen two paragons before we've seen a whole bunch of stuff why not two yolos why not and a chicken i just wanted to, to just uh to say and a chicken and we see the yolo not going for this position at least it looks like for a fat boy producing facility a couple of fat boys already on the front line moving westward a ton of t1 spam being established here by tectonic Feels like he's going to win this game with a bunch of like weak, inferior units, and that is what he's going to do. We'll take out a decent chunk of Team 1's eco as well, but, you know, and take out a couple of facilities as well. That's uh, all right. Heard the eco for Tectonic. Tectonic running at only 95, Tesla Max at 55, and Nasimka at 1.3k. That is a lot of mass to be down <laughs> between <laughs> teammates. And another nuke is launching. I'm just going to assume it's from the YOLO because it's that's really all that's being produced. More SMD are just being built everywhere. It doesn't even matter at this point where they're put. Just the line. You don't need you don't need this much. The sim guy, you don't need this much. You need like three or four in the same area being assisted, and that's perfectly fine. Not how, Okay, I want to know how many currently he has on the map because this is a little excessive. Seven in form in the form of the UEF. And 19. He has 26 SMDs either passively loading or being assisted quite heavily. This one is being assisted quite heavily. And we're going to see the loss of at least five, if not seven. Seven might be kind of a stretch. Going to take out more mass here for Nasimka. Uh, yep, those are gone. And those are gone. Yep. So five, seven's now down to 19. And now another attack here for the naval side of things. We do see the pressure coming off of Team 1's Tectonic. Use the Fat Boys to produce units. They're right there. They are right there on the front lines, and Fat Boy Fire is inbound. We see both the comms of Judica and Tetra standing by, hanging out next to some very volatile explosions, at least here for Tetra. Not the best place to sit. Well, the chicken is being brought in for defense against T2 units, these Riptides. They move pretty quickly, but they don't have a lot of hit points. And at least in terms of the chicken, and they will be wiped out pretty quickly. Another nuke lands, misses. A, oh, oh, nope. Misses a couple of the key artillery here, especially with this summit. That's oh man, that summit has gotten work done. Four veterans on this thing. How much mass killed? Fifty-six thousand. Targeting the the chicken as we speak. And the fat boy is gonna have to retreat, but the chicken gonna chase them down. Definitely not the best position to be in there with that chicken. We see a horde of strap bombers here to the east, and a, sorry, to the north, and a horde of tort bombers here to the east. And we do, we do see the comms of Tesla Max and Tectonic very far forward in terms of that western direction. We do see Son of Ibis has retreated and established another air grid, and we have the pummeling of that air grid as we speak by Team 1's artillery from the naval side of things for Tesla Max. 49 minutes in this game, almost at 59, but 49 minutes in this game. We still have the calm, just gonna stand on the edge of the map. To <laughs> Come and get me. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, that is hilarious. The calm of touch my berries is like, "Come and get me! Come on! Come! You won't! You won't! You won't do this! Come, come at me!" A Mavor being established here by Team One's Nasimka behind a line of SMDs. Definitely the place to be in. You produce this thing, and it's already, it's about to cross into the yellow. He does have the eco for it. He has 1.2 thousand mass. Obviously, he's doing a lot on the map, of course, but Strategic essentially it's being mostly headed by Team 1's Tectonic 
least in terms of the land sort of engagement, we do have three fat boys that are going to die, unfortunately. Fat boys are not uh, going to avoid that nuke. Maybe one. Uh, may, uh, maybe one. May, oh, no, uh, no, it's not moving fast enough. It is not moving fast enough. Those will die. And I think they might even get the, uh, the summon as well. There is a ace in there as well. I don't know if they'll get that. The one fat boy is dead. Second fat boy had its shields taken out. Third fat boy, perfectly fine. And it does look like he is producing units on the back. And they are, those, what are those? Skyboxers? I think he's producing skyboxers in the back. What is he producing here? Skyboxers as well. At least they look like skyboxers. Yeah, they're skyboxers. Another nuke, this time out from Team 1, and it's going for this base in the west. Son of Ibis is uh, not going to last very long here in this game. Might be the first casualty here for Team 2. At 51 minutes in this game, you haven't had a casualty. That is a very good metric to be on. Team 1 already lost one before 20 minutes. Yeah, that is going straight for that calm. That calm is just going to accept his fate and cup. Boom! Actually gets diverted by the volcano, saves the calm of the no, what? Wait, <laughs> look at Tectonico. What? <laughs> Wait, hold on a second. What? He survived the nuke, <laughs> TMD drag nuke, out, <laughs> out of range to the face. <laughs> what the heck? Uh, I was gonna say that's the calm death. Even I thought that was the calm death. Didn't know the volcanoes. That was a lucky, lucky. Uh, grab by those volcanoes and at 51 minutes that was <laughs> very surprising here. I have seen it grab a Billy nuke and I kind of have seen it grab a nuke before I think. I don't know if it can grab a YOLO. I think the YOLO is too I wouldn't say big but I, that would have to be a, that'd be an interesting t test to see if a T2 volcano can grab a T4 YOLO nuke missile. It would be interesting, but of course there are a couple of nukes up nearby anyways, so that might not work out entirely for Team 2. I mean, yeah, we do have the inbound restorers, and there is some flak being built for Son of Ibis, but uh, with the artillery fire coming in, oh, we, they took out those. I think that was their main target, wanted to take out more of the mass here for Son of Ibis. Those restorers will retreat, and Strap Bombers just railing that Colossus here and it's approaching on the east. We have Rascoms just trying to fuel some sort of defenses. They want to keep, I think, the Mavor, which is almost going to cross into the green here pretty shortly, definitely under wraps. It's paused a lot of the construction, though, because it's costing them a lot of you know, mass and energy and whatnot. But now this facility is going to be gone. Lots of T3 power will be lost. A bunch of engineers will be lost. A bunch of PD will be lost. And it's going to hurt more and more Rascoms being destroyed very quickly by those lasers from those Colossus. Man, that was, oh, Son of Ibis would have been out of this game, but uh, his TMD saved him. Very, very lucky there. If you planned it that way, that's amazing. I don't know if you planned it that way, but still. He does, we do see this one kind of loaded with a nuke. And maybe he'll have to use it for point defense nukage. If the Colossus, which they won't come into range, nuke is landing back here, but there are SMDs to take that out. We should cover that very yeah, yeah, they can cover that very easily. There are some uh, harbingers gonna await a fate. Not worse than death, but trying to take out there's SMDs right here. None of them are loaded, but you should take these out. <laughs> you wanna take out the SMDs and clear the way for those nukes. I don't think they know about the Mavor. Oh no, they they know about it. They they, they know about it. That's gonna be the main target. The nuke is well. Oh, it might. Oh, it's going to edge it out at least a little bit. One. Yep. It does get shot down. That boy trying to stave off that incoming threat. Three SMDs were taken out, so those harbingers did die to a worthy cause. Lots of redeemers trying to avail any sort of gunship usage. Another. Nukes are just going to land there constantly. We see artillery fire coming in, I think, from the west. Yep. It is an emissary online here for. Touch my berries, trying to reduce the effectiveness, of course, of the shields and the whatnot. The Mavor is almost done, though. It's about to cross into the... Well, n it is going to cross into the 90%. Going to cross into the 95%. The nuke now lands once again, and that is a kill here for Team 1. So at 54 minutes, 55 seconds in this game, T2 
team two has lost the first player on their team they will, if they do win they will not have a flawless victory victory unfortunately for them but team one does have a Mavor and it is about to complete I'm gonna watch it oh oh come on oh such a tease in the SMK. I want to watch it be finished Jeez. but the SMDs are actually ones being targeted not the Mavor very interestingly very interesting wanting again to reduce the effectiveness of those defenses here and there it is completed almost instantaneously after I look away from it and that thing is going to stretch out and fully um, complete itself I don't uh, try to think of you had one job says son of Ibis you, you, you have one job just spam units I guess Utica I don't there isn't really a lot of air uh, TMD do the tell this Top, oh, tell this to top right. Okay, or top left. Has more eco than the team. Top left is winning to Son of Ibis. Yeah, I mean, in terms of eco, 1,000 mass for Touch My Berries. And he takes out the Mavor from some missile fire to the west. That's a great move here by Schoon. Uh, why didn't you say that earlier? I did survive. Sneaky TP did 30 minutes, nothing. Oh, that's got to hurt. Oh. The, the Maver, all of that mass and energy and resources and the time and the whatnot, that's gone. I don't think it even got to fire a shot, I think. That has got to hurt Team 1's morale. Uh, I didn't even notice that attack. Oh, that's got to hurt while everything was distracted down here. And, of course, the nuke was constantly firing off. Team 1 lost a lot of momentum with the Strategic demise of detected. that artillery. It's just gonna you know have a fat boy hang out next to those smds and strap for strap bombs trying to go in and deal with a couple of these sacu engineer preset commanders we have some inbound uh riptides they'll deal with those units very quickly but we have strap bombers still coming in and dealing with those that is oh uh, okay we have missile fire coming in going after it looks like in a simca direct oh no nope, gonna drop four get the t3 max uh, I mean, it could have, maybe could have gone after Nisimka, I don't know. Artillery raining in on that position, constantly trying to take out those SMDs. A horde of engineers being produced back here for some unknown reason. Nuke landing over here. What's oh, going to hurt? Tesla Max is in the water, so he'll be fine. But Team 1 is slowly collapsing. They had some hope with the Mavor, but with the demise of the Mavor, that was uh, pretty deadly. Pretty, pretty deadly. Use already to take out Grids, says uh, Son of Ibis. Grids. He says uh, he's just pointing out all the grids. Just the horde of T2 Strategic bombers. Launch, they aren't detect. doing anything. They can't attack ground units. They can only attack naval units or stuff in the water, one of the two. But a nuke down south takes out some frontline defenses here for Team 2. That nuke is used. It doesn't wait. That doesn't look like a. No, it doesn't look like a regular. Oh, it's one of these. I was going to say, it doesn't look like an Aeon nuke. It looks like a, like a UEF nuke. And it's going to go to the east once again. Looks like another Colossus has been built. I don't know what it's going after specifically. Oh, it's going to go after this position. All this will be taken out. Essentially, it's just taking out all the outlying stuff here for Team 2. A lot of, again, a lot of focus is being done to hold off Team 1 from any sort of land incursion. They've done a great job on the east. And I think that's the departure of Team 1's tectonic. You just control case. Well, that looks like that's it. And now it is a... 4v2 in favor of Team 2 at 58 minutes in this game. Artillery, now two of them firing here. Of course, we saw the MSR being built earlier on. And it looks like a third one is built by a horde of Rascoms. Touch my berries. I'm just thinking he's just like, come get me. Maybe I'll take a picture. He just says, come and get me with, you know, his corner of the map. Bunch of, our, you know, a bunch of PD just says, come and get me. <laughs> uh... I don't know if I want that to be the thumbnail. I don't know what I want the thumbnail to be. Obviously, the YOLO is obviously a good choice. But, uh... Lines of SMDs. Maybe, I don't know. I'm trying to determine what I want for the, uh... For the thumbnail right now. But at 59 minutes in the game, the most of the Navy has now been eliminated here. I feel like at this point, I feel like I can speed it up at this point. We do see one strategic missile submarine. Actually, two of them still online here for Team 1. But uh, it's not going well. Team 2 has defenses. They have SMDs loaded. Team 1 would need a horde of strategic missile submarines. And it's not going well. Strap strategic bombers. 
being grouped up here in the middle. Now the nuke just the nukes are not stop firing. They're going to be launched constantly against Team One. I think there's going to be some sort of edge nuking happening here pretty soon. Yeah, I think I can speed it up to probably even three. We see a nice army to the north, all uh, mostly AA, exporting a Colossus. So, you see, there it goes. It's landing. How much will it take out? A couple of T1 P gens won't take out a whole lot, unfortunately. Another nuke is launched this time from that apocalypse, going northward. Oh, will it be close? It will at least hit the Colossus for the most part. Almost dead center. Look at that. Kaboom! Takes out a lot of hit points on that Colossus. And now the YOLO nuke is inbound with artillery fire as well. The YOLO is going westward, maybe going after those Colossus to the west. Artillery is churning through those SMDs. The core SMD is still alive. Seven missiles loaded. Takes out a horde of those ASFs. Oh, that's got to hurt. Oh, got his air, was asleep, says Schoon. Yeah, that was a great grab. We do see a interesting little Rambo come here to the west. There's only a couple of Ravagers, but uh, there's not really a whole lot here on that western side. But I don't think it'll be able to break through all the way, though, unfortunately, here. There's no teleporting nonsense from some Cybern commanders. There's no Cybern commanders in the game, so Team 1 and 2 don't have to worry about that. YOLOs are just going to be launched constantly, and this looks like it's going to be a win here for Team 2, unless something crazy happens, which I don't see that happening anytime soon. All the SMDs in the north have been taken out. The YOLO can land freely. Strategic wipes out all of that right here. Ooh, that's kind of hurt. Well, actually, not all of it, just a little bit of it. And... No, it's not looking good for this. I'm surprised that Tesla Max hasn't departed yet. Where Omni says Judica. I don't see an Omni. Oh, it's back there. Oh, I think those were three missiles, though. But they're losing SMDs as we speak. Emissary's firing all the time. The Synthka protecting himself with one shield, a bunch of PE, and a couple of SMDs. But the nuke, the shield is down. Takes out the rest of the SMDs. That thing is going to land. Will the Simca leave? Will he just take it? Oh, he... Oh, that's gonna hurt. Takes up the shield and men are building more shields. The SMDs are gone. It won't matter. Oh, man. That was a great move by Team 2's... Oh, what are, what's going on now? Wait, five artillery? Where are they going? You're going after some naval units? Oh, they're going after the uh, the Omen. Kaboom! Takes out all of that here for Nesimka. The Simca did look like he got out of, uh, out of, oh, actually look, he looks like he just control K'd. And, uh, all that's left is Tesla Max 4v1. You had five Colossus, select control all. We do have one final attack here from Team 1's Tesla Max. Chicken trying to deter these incoming Colossus experimentals. And even if the, Strategic even if the YOLO is gone, detected. it's not going to do enough. It's, it's really not. You have this giant base to the northwest that's not going to go anytime soon. We have, you know, chickens for de lots of chickens for defense, PD for defense. This is not enough. It's not enough, unfortunately, here for Team 1 Tesla Max. And that nuke will just decimate the rest of these defenses and infrastructure up here to the north. Oh, it does get shot down. Look at that. It does get shot down, Strategic but uh, will not stop firing. One hour, six minutes in this game. Port bombers going in because why not? Because why not? Because it's get annihilated on um, on impact. Colossus moving forward, very weak. However, takes out a PD, a PD, takes out a P gen, takes out a couple of shields, but that is really it. Gonna crash. Want to kill anything else? I would kill a uh, lightning tank, but uh, not not too much. Strategic launch detected. More missiles in the east. It looks like here by Team 2's Schoon. And artillery now targeting their own team. That's always fun. What's it hitting now? What's oh, shooting? Is it just shooting off screen? Did he mean it? I don't think he needs to do that. What is he targeting? How much did you spend on SMDs? Most of those are going off screen. I wonder what he's targeting. It's always fun to watch teammates just shoot at one another. SMD, uh, nuke will go in. We'll get shot down. It's going after a chicken. We'll kill the chicken. And the comm of Tesla Max has charged forward. And uh, there's not really a lot on that comm. That comm will be instantly defeated by those chickens. There it goes. That is the final comm here for Team 1. It was a great game here. Team 2 won the game. 
Let me know down in the comments how you felt about it. Hit that like button, hit that sub button, and let's go on to MVP or MUP awards. In terms of in terms of underrated player, we do have a couple of 1100, 1000, 1100, 1200s, 1300s. I feel like Ooh, Tesla Max did a decent job. Um, Schoon did a great job, especially with the YOLO building, especially with the tax snipe on the Maver. That was great here against Team 2. Sorry, on, against Team 1 by Team 2. Uh, they lost a lot of ground here in the middle, talking about Team 2 collectively, but they were able to recover and just kind of hang out for a while. Team 1 didn't try to attack the main base that much. I think they were betting on the Maver for that. But even if they took out this main base, Team 2 is... Player of Touch My Barriers just said, "Come and get me, see what happens." And uh, he he played the ultimate turtle, the uh, the safety net here. Well, not safety net, but essentially the the uh, oh, contingency plan here for Team Two. But I feel like in terms of MUP or MUP, he did build two Yolos. To be fair, looks like he just finished it. Maybe he doesn't have any mass kill with that one. This one killed 1.33 million mass. It is with an M. 1.3 million mass killed with one nuke launcher YOLO. And I feel like just with that, I feel like I will give the MUP Award, the most underrated player of the game award, to Skun Iatrop. Oh, let me zoom in. Skun Iatrop. Trope? Something like that. Uh, he, he did a great job. He was a little slow on the T3 air side of things, but he came back with the YOLO. He came back with the, with the tax snipe. I feel like with both those plays and just being pretty much solid and just constantly churning out those uh, nuclear missiles, I feel like he deserves the MUP award. Let me know down in the comments if you feel the same. And again, thank you so much for watching to the end of the video, and I will see all of you in the next one.